welcome to the workshop on Char Park Masters Scholarship. Um, very quickly, um, I will um, sort of introduce you to NU Access and the panelists for today, and then they take you over um, um, some of the basic uh, things about the Char Park Masters Scholarship. Uh, one, I think, clarification that um, that we would discuss is that I think Char Park offers a few scholarships. Um, so there is um, an exchange scholarship. There's an uh, there's a scholarship to do an internship in France as well. The one the session today is only for the Char Park Master's Scholarship, which is to do your uh, master's abroad. Um, but if you want to know a bit more about the other other um, scholarships that Char Park offers, uh, you can have a look at the website. But I'm sure Kunal will be able to speak more about all of that. So I will let him give that clarification as well. Um, so very quickly, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, we are Project Edu Access. We believe that access to higher education, leadership, and professional opportunities is a privilege that most people from marginalized communities are systematically denied through cost, information, and dispositional barriers. And we try to improve inclusivity in these spaces by removing some of these barriers for marginalized communities in the global south. Um, we do this by adopting four key interventions, uh, mentoring, counseling, and role modeling, information, advice, and guidance, capacity building, leadership, skill development, and evidence-based advocacy. Um, and to do that, um, and uh, we have with us Kunal today. Um, you might have seen Kunal in, in some of our workshops before, and we're really glad to have him here talk to us about um, the Chapak Scholarship. Kunal is currently doing a PhD at Sciences Po, but did uh, but received the Chapak Scholarship to do an MPhil at Sciences Po. Um, so thank you, Kunal, for joining us today, um, and I will hand it over to you now. So, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yeah, sorry. Okay, okay. Thank you everyone for joining in. Happy Diwali for those who celebrate. Nice little uh, Saturday morning. All right. So, the Chirpaik is a scholarship program given by the French Ministry for Europe and Foreign Affairs, and it is uh, liaisoned by Campus France. So in India, you have Campus France services all across the country, or in all metro cities and some other cities as well. Um, so they are the ones who liaison with the French ministry to provide the applications and so on. <clears throat> so indeed, the scholarship is designed for one to two years of studies. And in this case, I mean full-time master's studies, full-time graduate programs across all streams, all right? And uh, compared to, to, well, three years ago when I, I, was, uh, rece I received it, the, the money that they provided, the stipend has uh, changed quite a bit. I think this is just for inflation. So now you have a bit more money, which is great. And for any scholarship that you receive in France from a French ministry or a French government, you do not have to provide any uh, fees for your visa applications. All right, so once you get the scholarship, you usually receive an uh, attestation based on which you don't need to give any anything to the visa application. You just need a visa fee for the VFS when you submit your passport. And as well, uh, the Etudes en France uh, fee waiver is available. And for uh, public universities in France, say, for example, the Sorbonne or the, or the University of Paris, um, campuses, in that case, tuition fees are exempt, especially for scholarships which are provided by the government, all right? And apart from this, you have social security, which is also, social security is free anyway for any for students entering in. And I believe that students who are scholars receive need to have a top of, ins top of insurance. By that, I mean that social security by the French state covers about 70% of your expenses. And the other is top-up insurance, which is not too expensive. And I believe uh, Campus France scholarships, they reimburse you on your top-up insurance, all right? And based on your availability, based on your needs and the availability in Paris, you will be receiving accommodation assistance. So you just say yes to housing and provide some uh, some of your needs and they will al allocate something to you based on what you, what you need, all right? Uh, can you move to the next slide, please? Thank you. 
All right. So some ground rules for the scholarship. You need to be an international or an OCI card holder. Uh, unlike the Eiffel scholarship, which is more international all across the world, uh, the, the, the chart park is meant for Indian nationals only. And you need to be at least, uh, you need to be around 30 years old maximum, which is, the, which is quite interesting because, I mean, these scholarships are mostly reserved for people who are very young in age. So around 26, 27, that's a usual median age but by which people usually go to masters, for example, la la la. So 30 is the max. And you need to be a student currently enrolled in one of in any Indian institution for higher learning. So by that, I mean any bachelor's process, all right? Uh, and you have to have an application sent in to a French institution for your graduate studies of any kind, or even if it's an exchange program, which we'll go to it later. So you need to have an understanding, a memorandum of understanding with a French institution. So by a memorandum, I mean either an admissions offer or a correspondence which specifies that indeed your application is being considered or you're on the wait list and so on, all right? And this course must take place in France. And if you have one semester or more studies in another country, the scholarship will not be provided. It's only for internationals who arrive in French, uh, in uh, French uh, domestic territory, all right? Um, and of course, knowledge of French is, is nice if you come to France, but that's not what you need for the scholarship, right? Uh, so the language by with which you will be taught in France, that doesn't matter. It can be in French, it can be in English or whatever, but it's just the living allowance that you'll be provided, right? Um, all right. And you're not eligible to apply if you work on your master's thesis, training program, or research project. So it works a bit differently like that. So they provide you money to live here for a full-time program. And depending on your needs, if you need a gap or if you take an internship and so on, you need to specify that. And based on this, the scholarship will be on pause and then will will be uh, reallocated again when you once again begin your full-time studies until the end, right? Next slide, please. All right. So uh, the Chirpak has a very nice online portal to submit your documents. And uh, if you have not received the acceptance letter, sometimes there's a delay, right? Then you can attach a correspondence to show that you're in process, or you can also tell them about a wait list in case there is a wait list or a reserve list, all right? And if you're submitting applications to two or more universities, be sure to fill out the scholarship application form with information about your top choice. Uh, yes, you need to tell them everything, every, everywhere you've applied to all the wait lists, all the admission, all the admission results, all right? And as always, one one application per applicant, and everything must be in PDF or JPEG format. So the the last two will be part of the portal. Okay, so when you go to the portal, you'll have all the information you need to submit your documents. And if it's if it's in PDF, you need to convert it into images. All right, or the other way around. Next slide, please. All right. Um, basic stuff. All the stuff that you need for any scholarship. So you need an ID. Make a passport as soon as possible and a copy of, of your first page with your passport and so on. Uh, if you've received any other uh, visas or whatever in your passport, any stamps, scan everything, all right? Scan all, all the stuff that you have on your passport. And you need a copy of your admission or acceptance letter. If no, if no admission or acceptance, a wait list uh, notification or a correspondence with the dean of admissions or the, the head of your, of your respective department and so on. And yes, everything that you've studied in India, you need mark sheets for everything. Uh, most importantly, your bachelor's, all right? what, what, whatever it is that you do, did in your undergrad. Uh, language certificates, yeah, sure, if you need it. Uh, for example, if you have any uh, programs which require you to uh, learn in French, then of course you need a language certificate. And in some cases, barring any exemptions, you will have to have an English language certificate as well. That depends on the program as well, okay? And a, an employment internship record that can be separate from a CV as well. Um, you can mention us, I will talk about the CV and you can have another record for your, all the work ex that you've done or your academic, sorry, or your uh, professional referees for each of these employments, all right? Next slide, please. All right, so again, CV, uh, max two pages, one page is the best, honestly, but depending on the work that you've done or if it's an academic CV, then you can exceed one page. So it depends on 
case by case basis, all right? The most important one is, of course, one of the most important is your letters of recommendation. So before you apply, before you think about applying anywhere, uh, a few months in advance, you need to understand who should be your referees, all right? So on one hand, it is the admissions committee which required a specific letter of recommendation based on the subject that you're studying. But since the since the this uh this scholarship also requires an LOR, you need to tell your referees way in advance that you'll be writing, say, two letters or one letter sent to two places, right? So you need to be very careful about this, be very careful and be very mindful about the time of whoever you are asking for a referral. Okay. And uh, should be submitted as scanned copies of the original letters and signed paper letters should preferably with the reference to the scholarship. So that particular reference does not need to provide extra details about why you're a good fit for the for the admission to a program. A bit of it, of course, is there, but the letter in general needs to speak to your character and also your need for financial aid. All right, and why? Uh, what what competencies do you have? What marginal what what backgrounds do you have which make you a worthy fit for the scholarship and so on? It needs to be a bit more tailored, okay? Not per se to the program. And um, I think the best thing you hear is that if you have an academic referee, then getting a letter on a letterhead is quite nice. It adds validity. It adds uh, it adds legitimacy to the letter, which is quite nice. So you should you can think about that if you have. And indeed, it should be on a headed paper and bear the stamp of the institution. All right. That's the best way to go because what documents with no letter heads or no salutations here and there, they might seem a bit off to the admission to, to the scholarship committee. Okay. Next slide, please. Yes. So, yeah, this is quite nice, the statement of purpose, uh, because they segment the, the portal segments the entire essay in three blocks which should also inform you about all the future essays you're going to write at some point, okay? So with the so with admissions essays and with scholarship essays, they're very, very, very different things. The admissions essay talks about your competency and experience for the graduate program. And the scholarship essay talks about your need for financial aid and why you are choosing this particular program as opposed to another program, say back home or anyone any or anywhere else. Okay. So of course the first question would be uh, why did you choose France, which is well a very basic question, and what motivated your choice? So here is so these kind of questions seem very general, but you do not should not answer it with cliches. You need to understand exactly why you're coming to France. You need to make sure you have a plan. That plan will of course change or will not change. That depends on your case, but you need to specify, specify, specify. Okay, no cliches. And um, what are your academic and professional goals? So first and second question kind of mix in together. Because coming to France has two broad reasons. One is the program itself, and it's and why that program is different from a similar program back in India, and what will that program give you in your career, in your professional life, and so on. Okay. And uh, of course, a brief brief uh, roadmap is quite nice. So if you, for example, apply to a research-oriented master's, then of course, you need to tell us about whether that in that um, that program has a thesis element to it. If yes, what, uh, how much do you wish to write for that thesis? How much time do you need? And what are you gonna do after that? Okay, you need to understand that. And you need to tell us, tell the admissions committee uh, what will you be doing in France a bit after the program as well, okay? Uh, imagine that you are an evaluator assessing your own application. It's the third block. Why would you select the applicant herself, yourself? Please highlight a maximum of three aspects. So, I mean, these questions really make you think. Uh, compared to the Eiffel or any other institutional scholarship, the Charpec makes you really, really think about everything. Uh, so, of course, these and because these are three specific blocks where you can shine very well, do not attempt these questions or do not attempt the scholarship application like at the very last minute. Don't do it a week before, for example. Have ample amount of time, say two, two and a half weeks. Because otherwise, these questions will end up to be very generic and vague in your answers. And then it uh, it dilutes your chances to receive it, okay? Next slide, please. Okay. So the statement, so... Uh, so the statement of purpose, as we said last time, uh, in the last slide, 
would probably be three blogs already in there. So you would be writing like a Word document with all your essay, all your information, and then you will probably be copy pasting it in three different questions. I think that's usually the way the portal works, but they may, I mean, if they ask you to write, to submit the statement as it is the full thing, then maybe there is a document there that you can submit. But usually there's three portals where it's already in the form itself, okay? And indeed it should justify the actual need for aid. Um, it's very nice if you're able to quantify your expenses and tell them how much will you be able to cover in terms of tuition fee or so on, or how much, or the other way around, how much will the Charpak scholarship, at least in percentages, cover your entire expense to live in France? That's very nice to know, because then we know the level playing field of who really, really needs the scholarship, okay? And indeed, we have to differentiate between a chosen program in France with a similar program back home, okay? So these things tie in with the questions that we saw in the last slide, okay? Next slide, please. Okay, yeah, so it's kind of weird, like Misbah and I also checked this morning, but they haven't updated the timeline for next year's intake, but assume it's the same timeline. So the calls open in December. So today is what, today is I think 2nd of November. I think so, yeah. So in that case, if you want to apply to a program, an admission to any graduate program, then of course the, the season would have opened right now. Like it's, maybe it's about to close, I don't know. And depending on this, you need to start thinking about the chart back now. You need to email your referees, get your statements together, get your documents together, okay? And uh, the deadline for reception is 20th of March, which is a bit after, usually a bit after your admissions um, committee answers, answers your call, okay? Usually. So we get, I think, admissions results in December or Feb, and then scholarships come in March, April, a bit late. And yeah, so the publication of results is end of April. So they give you ample time between December and March for you to have an admissions offer, either a wait list or a definite yes, conditional or unconditional. And depending on this, you start prepping your applications, okay? Uh, next slide, please. Okay, yeah, of course, there's no, there's no GPA cutoff for the scholarship. It's very need-based. Depends on your profile. What did you do? What are you planning to do? In your professional life and how will the course help you okay so indeed academic excellence so your bachelor's courses uh, are very 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 important okay and the consistency of application and a tie-up between your current indian institution and your future french institution will also be an asset oh yeah for sure so somewhere it, it happens very often that um indian unis partner up with french universities for example Sciences Po or the Sorbonne, and people uh, students come to visit for a semester or a few months or maybe do a research project and so on. Um, so that's quite nice because then it's a very well, well, of course, the institution will be accredited and the French institution will know it. Okay, so it's quite nice. Next slide, please. I think we're done, right? Yeah. Yeah, sorry, I think my screen has frozen, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I think uh, we're done, yeah. Okay, let me see. Perfect, thank you so much, Vinal, for that. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we can start the Q&A now. Um, so if anyone has any questions, um, feel free to put your questions in chat or you can um, raise your hand and ask your question directly to the speaker. Um, I think we have a question yeah. in chat. So they're asking, is the scholarship available for deferred admissions as well? Very good question. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I would suggest, I I, I think no, but uh, to, to uh, confirm this, I would suggest go to the Campus France website. I'm gonna put the website link on the chat and uh, there they usually have a, a PDF with your bylaws. So there you will have a clear, definite answer on whether it's true. I'm not sure if it's true. Mm, let me upload the website link. Okay. Um, then uh, there's a question, does the scholarship not cover tuition? I know it doesn't. 
So uh, these campus France scholarships, they don't cover tuition. You need to cover that yourself. They only cover your stay in the country, okay? Um, I can read the next, next question. Can we apply in any university now in France and then get offer letter and then apply? Yeah, that's how it works. So you need to understand where you want to go, uh, apply, put in your application just for the admission, not the scholarship. And depending on the answer, or yes, no, whatever, based on this, you apply to the chart pack. That's why the chart pack scholarship has a big, uh, big gap between start of, so it starts in December and the deadline is in March, right? So you need to have, you have ample time to do your application for admissions and then apply for the scholarship, okay? Is someone who has done a master's before in India eligible to apply? Yeah, for sure, any kind of higher education, that's fine. The point is for you to come here to for graduate studies, so it's all good. Great, Vamsi, um, do you wanna unmute and ask your question? Oh, yeah. Hi. Uh, how are you doing, Kunal? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. So, um, the scholarship had an eligibility that, you know, you have to get an admission offer from the university and then you can apply for it. So, uh, I've applied to the Sciences Po University and so the first round I'll, I'll get to know them in December. But yeah. I'm also thinking of applying to PSC whose uh, application starts early January or something like that. Mm. So do I have to wait for an admission offer from all the universities I'm trying to apply to? Or if I maybe get one acceptance, I can apply and mention the other universities and that the process is still ongoing. Mm, okay. So PSC admissions open in December, in January? Yeah, around that time. Okay, cool. So a big, big chunk of this is your decision, your subjective decision on where do you want to go. Um, In that case... If you've say accepted for the for, for Sciences Po, then immediately put in your application anyway for the chart pack because you need the money. And if you you of course you tell you tell chart pack that you're waiting for PSE, but you have an acceptance from Sciences Po. So I would suggest that you apply as an as an admit as an admitted student from Sciences Po. Okay. Because then you have a because then the 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 camp then campus France is a clear answer that okay, you are coming to France or something. And uh, depending on your answer from PSC, then, so say you get the scholarship, and if you also get an acceptance from PSC, then you can try to speak to the camp your Campus France manager okay. to see if you can switch. I would say, I think you can. I think you can switch. You should read the bylaws again on the website because there are very specific details here. But for now, apply through Sciences Po if, you, if that deadline ends bef before the PSC, okay? Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay, some more questions on the chat. Uh, a student currently in his third year of the course can apply for the scholarship. Yeah, because I mean, bachelor's courses, I'm assuming that's bachelor's. So bachelor's would be three years on average in India anyway, right? Four-year courses are not too, not a lot. So indeed, so in the third year, you, you will have unofficial transcripts. So based on that, you can send in an application for France or any, any country really. Okay. Regarding the question about buy the course in France and not in your home, what can be mentioned to prevent generic statements? So I think the first, this is this is quite nice. So number one, talk about the syllabus. Talk about find a find a substitute program back home and here, and uh, talk about go through the faculty, go through the syllabus. So for example, for me in a research masters, I will go through the syllabus as well and the faculty as well, because I'm, do, I'm, um, I'm doing research, right? So I need to understand if the faculty is supportive like that based on what I like, based on, based on my research. So in that way, you can go to nitty gritties about the program, how it's really, really different. And then also talk about post, post program. So here you will get a, a long, a, like an extension on your residence permit to look for a job, uh, talk about that. What what sectors in France would you like to work in? If you want, if you come to Paris, then what's in Paris for you, and so on. Do some research and write about that. And also, you can compare it to post program stuff back home, and how is it different? Okay. And if it's not favorable, then you need to mention that in your essays to come here, right? Okay. Uh, like, does one need to be necessarily currently enrolled in a program in home country? Yeah, you need an accreditation. So you need to be. Uh, above your back, above your high school, you need to have any accreditation after the high school. Okay, will there be any interview after the acceptance? No interviews, no nothing. There is no, there is there are no screenings like that. The only document, the only stuff that they need to screen you is your essay and your CV and whatever is in the portal. Okay, 
I think we have one last question. If we, ha if we have done our graduation degree from distance learning program, not regular college, how would we get referred a letter if we do not have any specific teacher? Mm. Okay, that's a good question. If you wish then that distance learning program may have a program director, right? They must have a director who designs the syllabus or teaches something or designs anything in the program. So you can talk to them about your referral and you can also augment some professional referees if you have some with the academic one. Okay, so that's okay. Because this particular referral is just for the need of scholarship, more or less. It's not about the admissions to a program. That's very different. So here you can have a professional referee from your past work X and you can talk to your learning program director. They must have it. I think we're done, right? Oh, how many LORs? I think two, two minimum. I think two, two, yeah, two is a standard. You can add three, four, ten. Don't add ten. Two is fine. Two or three is okay. Yeah, that seems like all of the questions. You were quite quick in <laughs> getting. Ah, yeah. Um, yeah, that was good. Um. If anyone has any more questions, you can you know raise your hand and ask your questions directly as well to Kanal. Um, or again put them in chat. Uh, we'll stick around for a few more minutes before ending the session, which would be very efficient. I am. Uh, I'll also write my email in the chat if anyone needs okay. any any assistance or any questions later on, or you can also find me on LinkedIn. So. Yeah, any any more questions? Um, I guess just one more thing to say um is that as I as I mentioned, the Jarpak scholarship is um there are I think from the website you can tell there's three types of scholarships. So there's one which is a Jar Park Masters Master's scholarship, which is the session we've had today but there's also two other scholarships that um, I think one is for an internship one is for an exchange program so um, if you uh, you know if that's something you want to do have a look at the website we um, last year when we did the session on um, on the Charpak scholarship we also had somebody who did the exchange program um, with us on panel so I would suggest that you have a look at that by, um, recording as well I am just going to send a link to the video in chat um, <clears throat> yeah so I put the link to the session we did last year which has the recipient of the exchange program and then and then Kunal is there in the video as well <laughs> And uh, yeah, it might be helpful to have a look at that. Any more questions? Anything else before we end the session? Yeah, I think that's it. Oh yeah, there's this one thing that's kind of always, oh yeah, how do you navigate the language requirement of French language during the course? This is what I want to uh, talk about. Uh, okay, so it depends again on the course. So at Sciences Po, if you want to apply to Sciences Po, then uh, courses are in English, so you don't need a French requirement. You may need an English requirement, and you can get an exemption if needed. So at Sciences Po, um, if you've done your last Indian institution degree in English for at least a year or two, then you can get an exemption to not give the TOEFL and all that. Um, so navigating the requirement of French language. So if your course is in French, then you need to brush up on some French before coming in. I would say that you go to Alliance Française. Uh, they have campuses everywhere. I'll write it here. Uh, says, okay, so they have courses all across the city, all of, sorry, all across the country, and they also have online courses if, you, uh, if, you, if your city doesn't have it, okay? Um, so do learn a bit of French. And when you're here, then your specific university may have French classes. If they don't, then every, in, so if you're in Paris, then every district in the city has a specific municipality which has courses. So uh, the center of Paris has a big uh, office, 
municipal office for the entire city. They do French classes for you. You can go there for a subsidized rate. Maybe I don't know how the how much the pricing is, but you can go there. Okay. Could you recommend some university in France which have master's program in English, social school, or social sciences? And uh, you can go to um, so any economics related courses that you have in the country, a big chunk of them are in English, but the public unis, so PSL, University of Paris, and so on, they would be largely in French. So if you go to Sciences Po, if you go to PSA Paris School of Econ, if you go to Toulouse School of Econ, and so on, they would have English courses for you. And for humanities in general, Sciences Po is there. But otherwise, if you don't find, so that's a nice question, if you don't find universities in France which have a program for you, then don't come to France. Pick some other place, okay? You don't want to spend your time in a program that's not well suited, but you don't want to realize it here in France. So don't waste your time, okay? Can you apply to any other scholarship with this since this doesn't cover tuition fees? Uh, so, so you can, but you cannot accept any other scholarship provided by uh, the Ministry of France, okay? So for example, if you receive an Eiffel and a Charpak, then you need to select one, okay? If, you, if you're in a situation where you have Eiffel versus Charpak, pick Eiffel. That's a big more, a better, uh, like uh, they give you a bit more money. Um, but you can maybe go towards other Indian uh, Indian foundations. There's Inlux, there is uh, Tata Foundation, which has a loan, interest-free loan, and so on. So you can go through other Indian funders, providers for you, for tuition fees. But Ministry of France, you need one, okay? Well, I think we're done, yeah. Yeah, I I can't see any questions in my DM either. I think that's <clears throat> yeah, that's about it. Again, you know, as we end the session, there's always like a few questions that come the minute I'm ending the session. So a few more seconds. Again, this is the chance to put your questions uh, in chat or raise your hand. Otherwise, we'd end the session now. Um. Yeah, I think that's fine. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Kunal, once again for joining us today, um, early in the morning on a Saturday, and for speaking to everybody about the scholarships. Um, thank you everyone who joined us. Um, hope you have a nice rest of your day. Just a reminder that we have two more sessions scheduled for today. So, um, the second session for uh for the day after the chat bag is the PhD and Master's applications in Italy. Um. As part of our study in Europe series, um, that's at 5 p.m. IST. And then we have the um, session on applying for MBAs in the U.S., which is at 8 p.m. IST. Um, both are public workshops. You'll find the link on our social media. Um, so, yeah, uh, we'll hopefully I'll see you all at those sessions as well. Um, thank you again for joining us. Thank you once again, Kunal. And take care. And bye, everyone. Take care, everyone. Have a good weekend. Bye.